Everybody. My name is Trish Malines DeZico, and I'm the co founder and executive director of TAF. Hello, everyone. I'm Tammy Campbell, I'm the proud superintendent in Federal Public Schools. Uh, we've partnered with TAF for almost 13 years now, and great things have happened for our scholars. We both like to welcome you to the third annual Comcast Innovation Challenge presentations. And this is our first year bringing it to you virtually. There's nothing like powerful project-based learning. And we believe that it will translate virtually because our scholars will bring their creativity, their innovation, and their problem solving, as well as their search for answers to real world questions. We're excited. Now Comcast has been an important partner of TAF since the early 2000s when we were still offering out of school time programs. But today what you're gonna see is our kids demonstrating their ideation, critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, 
data analysis and communication skills they gain in the classroom and by participating in experiences like the Comcast Innovation Challenge. Parents, scholars, we can't wait to see you at this event. Come on out, show us what you've got. We're excited to see all of your hard work. We're all excited to see the students work, so let the countdown begin. Welcome and thank you for attending the 2020 Comcast Innovation Challenge Virtual Presentations, an event featuring the final projects from 24 Taffet Zahali High School students. I'm Brandon Carlisle, Taffet Zahali Science Teacher and TAF Innovation Challenge Teacher Advisor. And over the past few months, I've had the pleasure of overseeing our students as they've dedicated significant time and effort to solve an authentic community issue. In this year's challenge, students were split into six teams and tasked with solving the question, how can we increase the preparedness and independence of people with disabilities during natural disasters through the use of assistive technology? With the help of their Comcast mentors, these teams have produced their best solutions through a process of research, creativity, technology, and innovation. Today, you'll have a chance to vote and decide which team has the prize-winning solution. First, let's hear from Rodrigo Lopez, the Regional Senior Vice President for Comcast Washington, who can tell you more about the challenge and prizes. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us as we celebrate the hard work and creativity of these innovative students. They have worked hard on their projects since January and Comcast in partnership with TAF is proud to support them on this journey. We're also proud of our employees who have dedicated their time and energy to mentoring the students throughout the entirety of this project. Our thanks to all of you who volunteered. You embody the values prized in a Comcast employee and leader. Speaking of prizes, I'd like to announce the awards to this year's winners. All the teams will see their presentations in an upcoming article on the Comcast Washington website. And that presentation that wins first place will be included in an upcoming video about TAF and the project this year. This video will air throughout Washington State on our Xfinity TV channels. In addition, the teams that place first second and third will all receive scholarships towards their higher education. So from all of us at Comcast, congratulations to all the teams, no matter where you place today, the fact you have made it this far is an achievement in itself. We are really close to hearing from our students, but before we do, let me give you some more background information on this year's challenge and the process, materials, resources, and support student had access to through the program. Back in December, Comcast hosted our students for a field trip to their local offices. Students were divided into their teams and introduced to the challenge and their mentors. Student teams were supported by different Comcast mentors throughout the challenge, who specialized in three different phases. First, ideation, second, prototyping and development, and finally, branding and presentation. Each team was given a small budget of $100, to order their materials and had access to a variety of tools and resources, including Taffet Sahali's engineering lab and makerspace. The majority of this work took place after school over two months, as well as in remote collaboration on their final presentation. Now let me tell you how the voting process works. You'll hear from a total of six teams today, each numbered one through six. To vote, click on the link to our voting page in the description. You'll be ranking each team from first to sixth in each of three categories, process, product, and presentation. When the votes are tallied, we will announce the winners on Taft's social media channels. Once all teams have presented, I will review the teams again and you will have a chance to cast your vote. First up is a team that has done a particularly excellent job of leveraging each member's unique talents. This is team one, the Air Vest. Welcome to the Air 
Jarvis presentation. I'm Nick Batmore. I'm Riley Jane Restra. I'm Nick Chan. And I'm Emily Van. The driving question is, how can we use assistive technology to help people with disabilities in the event of a natural disaster? Let's take a look at the problem. Our solution is the AirVest, the new pioneer in fall safety technology. The AirVest is a lightweight vest that can be worn by anybody at any time. It uses innovative technology to keep someone safe from falls. The AirVest has a lightweight and fashionable design as well as a fall detecting technology. Our inspiration comes from this quote by Muhammad Gemini along with the special education program at Tabitha Holly. So what makes our AirVest so special? Well, it's equipped with a sensor that can detect falls and activate in under a second and it contains an airbag on the inside of the vest for a discreet but effective design. A little bit more about the air vest. It is hand sewn with a reflective strip so it can be worn at night. It uses an accelerometer and gyroscope to detect if a fall is happening. It is very compact and it can be folded with ease. It uses a servo motor to activate the CO2 canisters. It has a flow flowy to cushion falls and it has a CO2 canisters to inflate the floaty. The AirVest lightens the fall, reduces injuries, and allows the user to get up faster. In addition, the AirVest can be a great gift to a loved one, and anyone can use it anywhere they prefer. So what are our next steps? Well, 25% of our profit will be donated, and we will donate the money to charities and foundations that help people with disabilities. We would also like to express our gratitude to our fellow companions in the special education programs that helped inspire us. If you'd like to learn more about our AirVest, feel free to check out our website. Thank you. Next, we have a team that showed impressive scientific rigor in testing their prototype. This is Team 2, Sonicam. Hi, my name is Mark Malate. I'm Maren Perza. I'm Logan Wilhelm. And I'm Shinari Brett. And this is Sonicam. We created a product that is a guidance system for people with a visual impairment in the case of a natural disaster, since we know that navigation is difficult in a natural disaster. Most people who are visually impaired deal with a significant hindrance in physical mobility, and because of this, it has two modes to help guide the user. One mode is the dependent, which relies on a volunteer to direct and inform the user on where to go. The second mode is entirely independent and requires nothing except the device. Our original design was going to be a vest with a sensor, camera, and speaker covered in a thin sheet of plastic to keep it safe. However, this changed into a chest-mounted device. This is because it would be easier to fit smaller components and the line would be less difficult if it wasn't in fabric. The dependent mode of our product is called Third Eye. It relies on this camera, seen in the top left corner, to stream 1080p footage to a trained emergency worker. This person sees the live video and can speak to the user and provide information about the environment to help the user navigate difficult terrain. People would be given a much more detailed picture than what any analysis program would be able to. The major drawback is they need both a stable internet connection and a person to communicate with. Both of these resources may not be available to the user. Echo located. The purpose of this independent part of the project is to notify the user if there's an upcoming object that will be blocking their path of escape. It will send out beeping frequencies, and as they get closer, it will be louder and more persistent. The time from the release of the low-frequency sound wave and when it is received will calculate the distance between the user and the object. For our first test, we placed a solid object right in front of the sensor 10 times for each range, varying from 1 meter to 6 meters. As you can see, there is a minimal air space of 2.86 centimeters or less. This will have little impact in real situations as this amount of air is undetectable. We figured out that the ultrasonic sensor has this imaginary cone that it creates displaying the depth of width that the sensor has. To figure this out, 
we tested its capabilities with a whiteboard and a meter stick. We examined at which minimum point of horizontal depth this whiteboard will be sensed, as this will help in a real life situation due to the fact that it is sensing a closer object, which is more hazardous and dangerous for the user at that time and moment. Implications. Port forwarding would allow other users to be able to access our webcam server from another location that is not connected to the same internet connection as the user of the device. We also plan on improving the quality of our webcam by prioritizing the enhancement of frames per second while still maintaining our image quality, which can be done through programming. Originally, we were using a stationary power supply, but this cannot be used on the go. We are working on a mobile power supply that uses a voltage regulator with AA batteries. Thank you so much for listening. Next, we have a team that overcame significant issues with faulty hardware that they had ordered, not once, but three times in two months. This is Team 3, Emergency Watch. Hello, my name is Dimitri Poliada. My name is Ashok Chan. My name is Ivani Dio. And I'm Nicole Palelo. And this is our Comcast presentation 2020. The importance of natural disasters is that they can happen at any point in time and you always gotta be prepared. Our project aims to help people with disabilities to do just that. For our background research, we found that in a 2013 UN Global Survey but that a large number of disabled people suffer in disasters because their needs are ignored or neglected. Only 31% of correspondents said that they always had help, while 13% said that they never had anyone to aid them. Our target audience are people with any type of disabilities and people without any disabilities. But this watch is mostly beneficial to visually impaired community. The biggest problem are lack of affordable communication between people with disabilities and first aid responders. The second one is the vulnerability disabled people face during natural disasters. Some of the current solutions are easy access, to disaster facilities, communication in hotspots, and disaster preparation. Our solution is an emergency watch, which comes with a GPS tracker and a pulse sensor. GPS tracker allows you to send your coordinates from, from your location to the first responders location, such as 911 or the ambulance. And the pulse sensor just takes your pulse as long as it's connected to you. And this is our engineering process that we went through in order to design and construct our emergency watch. The left image is our first initial sketch, which was a very basic idea of what we wanted for our watch. On the right is our most recent sketch. This sketch considers the functionality of our watch. These are the two main codes used to make our idea possible. The one on the left is for the GPS and the one on the right is for the pulse sensor. The way our watch is useful is it, the device will be tracked, give heart rate consistently, updates location every five minutes and pinpoints the location and it'll have a braille system. So our buttons will have textures on the sides of our watch. The, the two main criteria that define our project was to send your location to the first responders and family in case of emergency and to transmit information through without wi-fi our constraints are coding limited budget COVID 19 and construction and design the materials of our watch was an arduino nano a gps receiver a usb cable a watch frame a watch wristband a pulse sensor a dual point wires and a GPS module. These are our sources, and thank you for your time. Next, we have a team that took a very different and unique mechanical approach to this challenge. This is Team 4, the Hooded Wheelchair. Hi, my name's Sonu. Hi, I'm Peyton. I'm Christopher. And I'm Natasha. And our project is a hooded wheelchair. In Seattle, there are many people with disabilities, but not all disabilities are the same. 
Some are physical while others are more cognitive, but we chose to focus on people who need wheelchairs. Our driving question is how can we solve the lack of assistive technology by creating a device that helps people with disabilities before, during, or after a natural disaster? 12.8% of the U.S. population has a disability, with 6.3% of that being children. Over 2.7 million individuals use a wheelchair every single day, and according to a UN Global Survey, confirms that out of 5,450 individuals living with a disability, 20% had great difficulty getting to safety in a natural disaster, while 6% could not get to safety by themselves at all. We wanted to create a product that will protect the head of an individual that uses a wheelchair by folding out from the back and acting as an umbrella that deflects debris and other heavy objects. Criteria we had was that our device had to, to deflect and withstand debris successfully. We couldn't make any permanent changes to the wheelchair. We had to document our process and make sure it could protect the participant without a hitch. Some of our constraints include using flexible and durable material, limited meeting and communication time between our teammates, and the prototype needing to be freestanding and supporting itself. Here are the sketches we came up with in the early stages of our project. In some of the drawings, you can see the product folding out and over the individual's head to protect them. Materials we used for our project were a laptop, electric saw, Dremel, drill, hinges, drawer tracks, PVC pipes, and ABS plastic. In the beginning of our idea, we had to gather our materials in order to start building our first prototype. Next, for us to envision what our prototype would look like, we laid out all the materials in the form of how we wanted to build it. Lastly, we present our latest prototype and share the data we had recorded. To test our device, we dropped various weights on it to see how it would hold out and recorded any damage. This is our procedure. Every detail of how our project is made is in it and the instructions to make it. To collect our data, we drop different weighted objects from 10 feet onto the prototype to test the durability. After each time we tested it, we recorded our data into these graphs. As you can see here, the breaking point of our product was at 2,000 grams being dropped onto the prototype. So why are we different? From what we've noticed, most groups have taken the technological route, but we chose more mechanical. In the future, we want to make it stronger, and after finishing the mechanical prototype, we want to add technology to it to make it more automatic and easier to use. Our vision for this project was to create a functional device that protects people who use a wheelchair during a natural disaster. What we managed to accomplish was a finished prototype that could support 2,000 grams. In the end, all our criteria was met, met and we achieved our initial goal. The tremendous amount of work that was put into this project ultimately allowed a product that could directly and positively influence those who need protection the most. We hope that one day a final prototype can come into full effect, and we thank you for listening. Go for the hooded wheelchair and have a great day. Next, we have a student who taught himself to code for the very first time to complete this challenge, and did so despite losing multiple team members along the way. This is Team 5, Gynad. Hello, my name is Jason Medisky, and I'm the creator of Gynad, or GPS Integrated Never Own Device. This is an engineering project made for the Comcast Innovation Challenge, which we should all know by now is a challenge where people have to create a form of assistive technology for people with certain hindrances, such as mental, physical, or sensor sensory hindrances during an outdoor disaster. My solution was to make an accessory a person could wear that would give first responders an accurate description of their location using a GPS. So in my case, I got it down to either right on the person or a hundred foot radius around the person. So there are other solutions to this problem already in place, such as 911 evacuation plans, first responders and life alert. However, 911 first responders and life alert suffer from the fact that during a natural disaster, wires, wireless communication is usually down or is being over, over flooded with texts and calls from people. But with evacuation plans, it's a fact that not a lot of people know about them. And in fact, only 17% of it on 17% of people on average in a community know about these evacuation plans. Now the criteria for my device was to make it, it was to have it just be able to send longitude and latitude data between themselves and it would be easier for first responders to understand. And the constraints were the cost, but Comcast helped a lot with that. Learning a new skill because I had to understand how to write and read the Arduino language and C++ because Arduino is just an implementation of C++. The materials and how to wire wire them, uh, code for them, and implement them. 
power power because size is a, con size is a constraint. Power is a constraint because there's only, only so much power you can fit into a tiny battery and fixing everything in time. So the materials I used were Arduino Nano and Uno. However, you can just use Arduino Nanos. I just had an Arduino Uno on hand, so I used that. And an LCD screen, a G six GPS made by NeoBlox, or actually it's UBlox, Neo UBlox 6M, and a 2.4 gigahertz transceiver, and of course, wires. So right here, you can see some schematics for the design that I made. Uh, this is for the receiving end. This is the transmitting end. You can see the LCD screen, transmitter, and the Arduino Nano. And I actually have them right next to me. So right here, oh yeah, I'll just take it off. This is the transmitter. So this is what gets the GPS data and transmits it to the first responders. And then this is the receiver with an LCD screen. And I'm gonna get the code up here in a second, so I'll be back. All right, so this is the code for my devices. Right here is the transmitter, and right here is the receiver. Now, this, while this code does work, there are a couple changes I'd like to make with this and the overall device that, to limit its size. So I'd like to use an Arduino Pro Mini in the future and use and make an actual wristband out of it. However, this has been my presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Our final team is the one that used the lowest total of their project budget. Their only purchase was a book on how to code on, in JavaScript. This is Team 6, Eva to the rescue. My name's Danielle Maddox. I'm Tish Bo. I'm Karina Soltero. And I'm Frank Fishback. And this is Eva to the rescue, evacuation virtual assistant. Meet Ava. Ava is an artificial intelligence that our team created to alert people with disabilities to natural disasters in their area and help them prepare for and respond to accordingly. She is able to connect to your phone through an app or an affordable Google Home, which makes her very easily accessible. She's a one-of-a-kind AI where she speaks to you first when there's danger rather than waiting for you. During our research process, we found that 71% of people with disabilities do not have a preparedness plan for natural disasters. Additionally, we learned that virtual assistants are frequently utilized by people with disabilities to amend their lives. Hello, did you know that there is a flood warning with the risk of possible evacuation in your area? No, I did not. Would you like to run your preparedness plan or your evacuation plan? Preparedness plan. Okay, starting your preparedness plan. Step one, assemble an emergency go bag. Make sure to pack with food, water, and change of clothes, as well as basic hygiene tools. Store above possible flood lines, but within an easy reach and safe to get to. Are you ready for the next step? We created Ava to walk people through a simple step-by-step -step instruction to help prepare and safely evacuate, and to give users the option of communication through text or speech. We are currently working on connecting Ava to outside sources to create a more comprehensive assistant in time of natural disaster and emergency. We want Ava to help a wide variety of disabilities a person might have, from physical to developmental. After alerting you to natural disaster, Ava walks you through your customizable plan, waits until you're ready to continue, repeats yourself when needed, and can help users reach out to their network for physical or further assistance. Eva is the best because of how versatile and accessible she is. She can always be in your back pocket and has been created to offer general plans that can be easily customized to fit users' needs, making her effective for assisting a variety of different disabilities and needs. The green data represents our primary trials of experimentation, whereas the blue represents the trials conducted after. Through data, we were able to understand which aspects of Ava required refinement to better enhance user experience and capability. Our future vision for Ava is to have her be able to help you prepare for and respond to multiple natural disasters. In addition to that, we wish to test and develop her program with focus groups, as well as integrate a feature to provide comfort in, to users in a time of stress to create a better and more comprehensive artificial intelligence and assistant. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Well, for Ava to the rescue. Congratulations to all of our students. 
We are so proud of all the work you've accomplished and want to share some messages from some of the folks who witnessed your persistence along the way. Hi, I'm Moni Kokett, the Career Readiness Manager at Taffet Sahali. I've had the privilege of working with these students over the last five months on this challenge. Their hard work, dedication, and perseverance tells me they are going to do great things in this world. I'm so proud of each and every one of them. Congratulations, students, on a job well done. Hey everyone, it's James here, uh, one of the Comcast Innovation Challenge mentors. You may not recognize me, I've grown a beard since, since you guys all last saw me uh, with the new stay-at-home, home office situation. Um, I want to give a thanks to TAF for partnering with Comcast. Um, I want to give a thanks to all the students for always being engaged and professional. And, you know, I've just been really inspired by this entire process, uh, by the students as far as seeing the ideas develop throughout the process, the ambition behind these ideas. Some of these were just, I remember the first day and, and the students kind of presenting what their thoughts were and I was kind of like, wow, all right, this should be fun. And uh, man, the the gains each week coming in there and kind of seeing the progress was amazing to me. And um, then seeing all of you guys present those initially, I was amazed. I, I really think this group of students um, has a lot of a lot of things going for them in the future, and um, and to all those students, I mean, every one of you did a great job. The way you guys stepped up, how well your presentations were, I can't wait to see what the final products are. Um, I can't wait to see the final presentation, and I hope that you wow everybody as much as you wowed me. So, congrats for making it this far, and I can't wait to see what you guys do on this final presentation and what you guys do in the future. Tap students, how you doing? This is Kim Nong, one of your mentors from the Comcast Innovative Challenge. I just want to say congratulations for making it this far. Uh, we are all looking forward to seeing the final product. I uh, want to say how proud we are just to be able to work alongside you, be your mentors, and uh, continue to encourage every single one of you all. Uh, also, good luck. Uh, final presentation coming up. We know all of you will do an amazing job. Uh, stay focused. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys in video um, and the final product. Everyone stay safe. Hey kids, my name is Uzo Mokedi with Comcast and I just want to thank you for doing such a wonderful job with your project. Um, I sat in several of your breakout sessions and I was amazed by the teamwork, the innovation, and the collaboration that you guys had. Um, congratulations and I wish you success going forward and best of luck in this competition. Thank you. To all my students, I'd like to share a short message. I've been so impressed with each of you over the past several months. Your work speaks for itself, even if it isn't as fully realized as you may have hoped. Six months ago, few could have predicted this global health crisis and the resulting interruption of your work. However, it is from the crucible of adversity where your greatness has emerged. You have been adaptable, diligent, and supportive of each other under pressure. You have risen to the occasion, overcoming the challenges of social distancing, remote collaboration, and inequitable access to technology. More so than perhaps any of the skills you practiced after school in our classroom, these past few weeks have truly prepared you with the skills you will need to be innovators in a rapidly changing world, no matter what the future may bring. Well done. It has been so exciting to watch these projects develop. Again, here are the prizes. For third place, scholarships of $600 per student. Second place, scholarships of $900 per student. And for first place, scholarships of $1,500 per student and a laptop. To vote, click on the link to our voting page in the description. You'll be ranking each team from first to sixth in each of three categories, process, product, and presentation. When the votes are tallied, we will announce the winners on Taft's social media channels. Again, here are the teams that you saw today. Team one, the AirVest. Team two, Sonicam. Team three, Emergency Watch. Team four, the Hooded Wheelchair. Team five, Gynad. And team six, Eva to the Rescue. Thank you for joining us today. 
Thanks to Comcast for providing our students with this amazing opportunity three years in a row. Thanks to Technology Access Foundation for bringing your partnership to create programs like this at Tafet Sahali. And thank you to all who have tuned in to watch the results of our students' hard work. Remember, you have until midnight tonight to vote. Just use the link in our bio. Thank you and farewell.